Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can make your own pressure sensor mat that works in HomeKit. So there's so many cool ways you can automate something like this in your smart home. We'll discuss some of those automation ideas and I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to make one of these of your own with just a few inexpensive products from Amazon. No soldering or crazy advanced skills or tools needed. It's super easy and uh, just a whole lot of fun to automate once you have this in your HomeKit setup. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane. If you're new here and this channel is all about building an easy Apple home smart home with new videos published every Sunday and live streams every Wednesday. So I was thinking just how great it would be, you know, if I could automate parts of my smart home based on when I get in or out of bed. That's kind of how this all started um, without having to rely on motion sensors and things like that. Maybe you want the lights in your bathroom to come on at night when you get out of bed or something like that. Then I started kind of thinking about all the other cool ways you could utilize something like a pressure sensor in HomeKit. Maybe you want your TV to come on when you jump into bed between 9 and 11 p.m. or maybe uh, when you sit on your couch. You can put one of these under your couch cushion just to turn on the TV or whatever. Maybe in your desk chair to trigger automations. I can see this being super helpful if you're a caregiver and want to get like HomeKit notifications or even set up automations when somebody gets up out of bed. You can even put one of these under your front porch mat if you want to get notifications or create alerts, uh, you know, when somebody's at your front porch if maybe you don't have cameras uh, for whatever reason. So those are just some ideas. I'll leave the creativity to you guys. Uh, let me know down in the description how you would automate a pressure sensor like this in HomeKit. But for now, let me show you how I was able to accomplish this and exactly what you'll need. We're gonna just use basically a car sensors and a pr little pressure mat that I got from Amazon. There are a few you know, variations of pressure sensors and mats that you can go with. There are little cheap sensors that you you can buy probably more of a DIY route you know a lot of those some sensors may require you to solder wires and things like that what I actually did was purchase a little bed sensor so I'll put a link to the one that I got down in the description but there's lots of different ones similar to this that you can get different sizes and things like that this is basically a bed sensor used by like nurses or caregivers that kind of thing so this one actually has a had a wire already attached to it which means you know we won't have to do any soldering or anything like that if we don't want to. And then, of course, you'll just need an Acara sensor. So today's video is sponsored by Acara. I'll put links to everything that we discussed down in the description below. If you've ever watched the channel before, you'll probably know that I am a big fan of the Acara products. Been using, you know, their sensors and cameras and all that stuff in my smart home for many years. Super reliable, very affordable. Now, there's actually two methods to do this that I'm gonna show you here today. The easy version using an Acara contact sensor and the super easy version using an Acara water sensor. Both methods are quite simple and don't require any special tools or any soldering or anything like that. You do need an Acara hub to use their sensors in HomeKit if you don't already have one, so do keep that in mind. But I do have an Acara hub or a few to be exact. So I'm gonna pair my sensors to my M1S hub. I'm gonna get those working in HomeKit and everything first, and then I'll set those aside for now. Next, let's take a look at the pressure mat that I purchased. The wire attached has like a phone jack of some sort at the end, so I just cut that off to expose the wires. You kind of peel back the casing. This particular sensor has four wires coming from it. You're only gonna need two of them. You can use a multimeter to test which wires are the ones you need. Alternatively, you can also, if you have an Acara water sensor around, you can just use that to test the wires by um, pressing the wires to the terminals until you notice some feedback in the home app and you know kind of testing the pressure sensor so that's a super easy way to determine which wires you'll need to use uh, that way and as you can probably already see this is how we'll be able to use the water sensor for this little setup once you've determined which wires are the ones you need to use in my case it was the black and green wires you can simply attach those wires to the terminals on the water sensor. So you can unscrew them a little bit and then wrap the wires around the terminal screws and screw them back in. That's literally all you have to do. Now you'll see when I put pressure on the mat, the water sensor is triggered. So this is certainly the easiest method. Of course, uh, you didn't even have to take the sensor apart. 
Uh, but it's not my favorite method for HomeKit because even if we have all notifications turned off in the Home app and in the Akara app, it's still gonna show that there is a leak in the Home app when the mat is detecting weight because you know HomeKit sees this as a water sensor. So I don't think there's any way around this. This may not bother you. And again, with all notifications turned off, you'll only see this when you open up the Home app. It might not be a big deal for some. If you're only automating this in the Akar app or maybe even using something like Home Assistant, then this method might be perfect for you. But I do wanna use mine in HomeKit and seeing that leak alert would probably drive my OCD crazy um, every time I'm using the Home app. So I wanted to try automating it with a door sensor so I could just get a simple open or close status in HomeKit when using the mat instead of you know that water leak alert and it turns out this is pretty simple also and another benefit is you can turn on notifications for when the door is open or closed in HomeKit. Now for this method we will have to take the door sensor apart so this one's a little bit more tricky but still pretty simple no soldering or nothing required unless you want to. So you can actually go ahead and get rid of the little small part of the sensor we're not going to need that. Carefully take the big part of the sensor apart. Now what you're looking for is what's called the reed sensor which is is this here looks kind of like a tiny little tube. Now, if you can see close enough here, you'll notice the reed sensor is soldered onto the board on either side. So this is actually where our two wires will need to connect. Now at this point, if you have the tools and the skills, you can solder your wires here. You can also remove the reed sensor if you wish, but I don't think that's necessary. Um, obviously soldering the wires here will give you a stronger, more reliable connection and hold probably over time. But like I said, it's not necessary. Um, if you don't plan to solder the wires, you can simply just wrap the wires from the sensor around these endpoints of the reed switch. You'll wanna wrap them as good and as tight as you can so they won't come loose and that's what I'm gonna do here, no soldering. You can test the sensor some more to make sure it is working as expected. Now we can put the casing back on the sensor. So what I did to mine was just using a pair of snips, kind of created a little cutout where I can run the wires through once we put this back together. And since I didn't solder mine, I actually like to use a little bit of electrical tape or something like that, wrap it around once or twice just to make sure everything is nice and tight and that those wires aren't gonna get pulled and tugged and stuff like that, just to kind of keep those wires put in place. And that's it. Now for the fun part, you can put your new HomeKit pressure sensor in place and begin setting up your automations. So you'll definitely want to do some testing and things like that to make sure it triggers the way you want. Something like this might even, you know, you might even need to move it around a little bit. This is one of those things that might take some trial and error, you know, to get your automations just right. And it can be affected by lots of things like the mattress you're using, box springs, um, you know, other factors. I tested mine out first in my bed, which is the main place that I really initially wanted to use this. It does work really well here for me and with my mattress and everything. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for every mattress, you know, different materials might be different, I don't know. And weight does play a factor also. Both my wife and I were able to trigger this bed sensor. Um, when testing it, but when I asked my daughter, who's 12 and much smaller, to kind of test it out and lay in the bed, it, the sensor did not pick her up. So if you're like a really small person, then you might have some more difficulty getting this to work under a mattress. Uh, so just some things to keep in mind. And of course, this particular mat will only work for detecting, you know, one side of the bed. You'll need another one or a bigger sensor or something like that if you want to detect both sides, you know, of a larger bed. All in all, I'm super happy with this. I really like the option of using the Akara door sensor so I can just get a simple open or closed reading in the home app and I can automate based off of that. So far, I've been using this in my bed to turn on a bathroom light during the night and to trigger my bedtime TV scene when I first lay down. Uh, super awesome. But I am strongly considering moving this and using it on my new couch in the studio to trigger like a TV scene to come on, turn the TV on, lights and things like that. That could be pretty awesome. So I might do that. Let me know what you think about this and how you would automate something like this in your smart home. These little Acara sensors are so useful. I love using them for, you know, different home kit automations throughout the house. If you want to see how you can weatherproof an Akara door sensor so you can use it outside and basically make your gate smart, check out this video right here. Also be sure to like this video if you got something out of it and subscribe for new home kit videos every Sunday. Live streams also every Wednesday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.